translation by Professor of Art History at Zhejiang University, China. My specialty is Chinese calligraphy. I study the history of Chinese calligraphy. I try to study the cultural life of government official in the later Qing period, roughly from the 1850s to the 1890s. In fact, calligraphy was the major hobby for the Chinese elite. The calligraphy in everyday life can be divided into three categories. One is practice. Second is self-entertainment. Third is the calligraphy made for gifting. Gift calligraphy constitutes a great proportion of classical Chinese calligraphy. That means most calligraphy works survived today are actually made as gifts. There are two major formats of gift calligraphy. These two formats are fans and couplets. If you see the format of couplets, you will find that they are easy to arrange compositionally. For instance, most couplets hung on wall they occupy a large space. Let's look at the central hall of Confucius residence. But you can see that the wall are fully occupied by several couplets. Couplets are public, they are hung on wall, formal, ritualistic written usually by a single artist. Calligraphy is not only an art, but also it has social function. Fans present an interesting contrast to couplets. They are portable, they can be folded, and then they can be written by several artists. If you do not have a fan in public, people will consider this is a sign of lack of taste. That's why people carry the fan in winter. Fans can show people's social relations because fans bear the names of the painter, names of the writer. Through those people, viewers could know your circle and your social status. Every member of the educated elite paid great attention to this art in the second half of the 19th century. Artistic expression, the studies of ancient canons continued to be the most important intellectual expression and the pathway to social power.